We're so glad to have you join us today for Bendale's church service. Since this is the first Sunday of the month, it is our communion Sunday, and so I would invite you to have some bread or some wine or juice ready for that later in the service. The class in the attic will meet as usual on Zoom at 12 noon and Chuck Phillips will be teaching today. So parents and youth, please check your emails for the link. Thank you for your continuing generous support to Bendale. And I know we say this every week, but we are truly grateful. We know that a lot of charities right now are struggling. We know that a lot of you are struggling financially. And so we appreciate every gift, large or small. We encourage you to use e-transfer as the most secure method of giving and you can use the email address donate at bendale.com. Now if you wish to use a check you can please mail your checks directly to our treasurer Kellyanne Robinson at her home address. And if you wish to earmark some or all of your donation to the building fund uh, please indicate that along with your e-transfer or your check. If you have questions, comments, or prayer requests, we'd love to hear from you at info at bendale.com. We're going to open our service in prayer after I give a few updates on some of those we have been praying for. Linda Mills is still sedated and on a ventilator in ICU in Peterborough. She is being treated for a secondary infection in her lungs. Uh, she's been receiving antibiotics for that. Her oxygen support has been between 50 and 80% this week, but in the last few days, it has been moving in a more positive direction, so we're grateful for that. She is very swollen from steroids, and the hospital is going to try one more solution before uh, going to dialysis. The lesions around her mouth and on her throat are very bad, especially the one above her lip that is constantly rubbed by the ventilator. On a positive note, Len and Linda are no longer contagious. A chaplain is going in daily to read scripture and to pray with Linda. Uh, both daughters and Len have been able to visit and hold the phone for a couple of friends to talk with Linda. Even though she's sedated, we really hope that she will hear their voices, hear the hymns that have been played, and that this will bring comfort to her. Johnson Shoe's brother Vince is still in ICU on a ventilator with COVID and he has been transferred to Ottawa. Uh, thankfully his oxygen support was reduced last week and it is moving in a more positive direction. Uh, Brian Thompson's sister Joan will start radiation in two weeks and it will last for five weeks, five days a week. Nan Tanch has been in the hospital for over four weeks now following a fall in the night. Please pray for a smooth transition into a home where she will be well cared for. Thank you for praying for Barb Hopkins Scarpino to get into a sleep apnea test soon. It was done late last week, so please pray that the results will lead to a successful treatment of her dreadful headaches. John Scarpino is expecting a call from the surgeon on Tuesday about removing the tumor from his pancreas that has now been shrunk through the chemo. So please pray for wisdom about that and also for healing, uh, not only from his cancer, but from the effects of the chemo and the pain and swelling from the blood clot in his leg. And also we remember Terry Pinal as he continues with that new chemo every two weeks. We have so many others that we could also pray for that we could spend the entire service just in prayer and of course we can't do that. But last weekend on, on the Sunday at our Zoom prayer meeting, we had a wonderful time with uh, many people joining us, some from the past, uh, coming from as far away as New Brunswick. And it was a wonderful time where we were able to remember all of our loved ones in prayer. And so I'd encourage you to come to our next one on May 30th, um, but also during the week, pray on your own for all of these loved ones who are suffering, um, or perhaps call a friend or arrange a Zoom meeting with some friends or at your Bible study and pray for these dear ones as well. So let's just open our service in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much that we can meet this way, even though we can't meet together, but we're still connected. We can still pray for one another. We can still hear your word. And Lord, we come to you as, as the great physician and the healer. And we bring our friends and our family members to you. 
and we pray for healing. Uh, we thank you that there have been some uh, glimmers of hope with Linda um, as the oxygen support has been reduced and also for the oxygen support being reduced for Vince. And we pray for complete healing for both of them. And we pray for peace for their families, particularly now that, that they are further away in Peterborough and in Ottawa. Lord, we pray for Brian's sister Joan, as she will be starting radiation very soon. We pray that you would give her peace and strength and healing throughout this time. We also pray for dear Nan, as uh, she has lived on her own all these years, and we pray that you would help her, give her strength and courage as she will move into a new home soon. We pray that the staff will be compassionate and loving towards her, and, uh, and that she will settle in smoothly. Lord, we thank you that Barb got the sleep apnea test quickly, and we pray that it would lead to successful treatment of her headaches. And for John, as he would meet with the surgeon this week, that uh, they will have wisdom to know what the best course of action is. We pray for healing, and we pray for healing for Terry as he continues to have chemo and has had chemo for so long. We pray for healing for all of these who have been mentioned and also for those who are on our minds and in our hearts. Lord, we entrust them to your care. We pray that you would bless this service, that we would listen with attentive hearing as uh, we hear the sermon later, that our hearts would be filled with worship as we sing together and as we celebrate communion. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would encourage our hearts and teach us from your word today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Sometimes you can read a passage for years and suddenly find something quite new. I often include 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 to 18 at the top of a prayer request, particularly if it is one that is an update telling about an answer to our prayers. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always isn't always easy to do, especially if we're in difficult circumstances. With praying continually, we may think of it in the King James Version that some of us learned as children, pray without ceasing. And we've certainly had the opportunity to pray without ceasing very often recently for friends here at Bendale. Give thanks in all circumstances. Sometimes we forget to, to give thanks, and that's why I like to put this verse, particularly when we've had an answer to our prayers. But it's not just for the answers to our prayers, but it says to give thanks in all circumstances. Not always particularly for all circumstances, but we can find something to give thanks for in each of our circumstances. But it wasn't until we were studying 1 Thessalonians in the home Bible study this fall that it suddenly struck me that Jesus perfectly lived out those verses, leaving an example for us to follow. So before we partake in communion today, I just want to quickly look at each of these verses with regards to Jesus. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Let's look for a moment at rejoice always. In Hebrews 12 verse 2 we read this, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For the joy set before him. It wasn't the joy of the cross. No, certainly that was not joy. He endured the cross, knowing that the joy would come afterwards, the joy of bringing us into his family, the joy of bringing us our salvation, the joy of obeying his Father. In John 15, verses 9 to 11, Jesus says to his disciples, just shortly before he was crucified, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Rejoice always. Let's look for just a moment at pray continually. We read in the Gospels that Jesus prayed very early in the morning. We also read that he prayed all night before choosing the disciples and he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane before his arrest. And this was no casual prayer, this was an urgent, agonizing prayer, knowing that he was soon going to die on the cross. Jesus taught us through his example to practice the presence of God by praying continually and in all circumstances. And then finally, give thanks in all circumstances. When Jesus knew that he was about to die on the cross, we read in Matthew 26, Mark 14, Luke 22, and 1 Corinthians 11, that he gave thanks for the bread, knowing that it was representing his body that was about to be sacrificed for us. He also gave thanks for the cup, indicating that it was his blood in the new covenant, which was being poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So as we come to communion today, may we receive the bread and the wine with joy, knowing that Jesus willingly sacrificed his life to have the joy of bringing us into his family. May we be encouraged to pray continually, in other words, to have constant fellowship and conversation with our Lord each day. And may we give thanks from our hearts for his love, his death, and his resurrection that has brought us salvation and eternal life. Let's thank him in prayer. Lord, we thank you that we do have joy in your presence. We thank you and rejoice that we are saved through your sacrifice. And we thank you for your love. We thank you for the bread that symbolizes your body that was broken for us and for the wine 
that represents your blood that was shed for us. Lord, we take these with grateful hearts and we ask that you would bless this time, that we would truly focus on you and give thanks through our lives that we would serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.
Good morning. If you will take your Bibles and turn to 1 John chapter 4, and we will read the entire chapter. Our speaker this morning is Dave Robinson, and we're looking forward to what he has to share with us this morning. Just before I read the passage, and I'm not here to preach this morning, but I just want to draw something to your attention that I'm always reminded of when I read 1 John and think about 1 John. John has this very sweet, intimate love for the people he is writing to. You will notice that he often uses two phrases. One is, my dear children, and the other one is, my dear friends. The reason I think of Vi, because Vi Rivnak used to often say to Cindy and I, and to many of us, to those in her family, she would use the phrase, my dear children. And that sweetness and that tenderness is something that we need to make sure that we understand when we read through the Gospel of 1 John. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ, who has come in the flesh, is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and is even now in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one that is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God, and whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him, and he is God. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us, so that we have confidence in the day of judgment, because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one whose fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. 